as I'm driving to the church building this morning here on the radio. We're going to have a moment of silence while we remember what happened at precisely this time that many years ago. And then there was a short moment of silence. And they said 12 minutes ago, the plane had flown into the North Tower. And now the plane flew into the South Tower. And just at 9.24 or whatever, uh, the plane flew into the Pentagon. And then at 10 something, the plane hit the ground in Pennsylvania. Do you remember when it happened? Do you remember how you felt? I'd like us to take a moment for silent prayer. So if you'll pray with me, please. Let's pray for the survivors. Let's pray for the families affected. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for the upcoming election. Let's pray for the divisions in our culture. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I encourage and implore you this morning to figure out how God is calling you to be part of his answer to your prayer this morning. Today is 9-11, but Thursday and Friday of this week, I was not focused on 9-11. I was focused on something else. Next slide, please. Meet Max. Max is the bright red knob. <laughs> in the middle of the picture being held by my older son, Jonathan, with his lovely beaming wife, Christina, there in the, in the bed. Thursday and Friday, Nancy and I were busy hugging on and snuggling our first grandson. And it made for a very jarring juxtaposition. The hatred and the horror that were 9-11 and the love and care that comes with bringing at least some influence into the world. And then there was my sermon text for this morning, which was 1 Corinthians chapter 7, a chapter about how to handle all different kinds of relationships. The sermon title that was initially uh, for this Sunday was supposed to be on relationship status. Relationship status, interesting concept, right? You get on Facebook, next slide. And Facebook lists 11 options. Single, in a relationship, engaged, married, and my favorite, it's complicated. In an open relationship, that's not good. Widow, that's not good either. Separated, that's not good. Divorced, that's not good. In a civil union, I wonder how civil it really is. In a domestic partnership, now that one I'm not real clear about. You know what, if you're familiar with 1 Corinthians 7, you realize that it fits relationship status to a T. If you're married, do this. If you're not married, do this. If you're widowed, do this. And I thought, man, that's the chapter to talk about relationship status. Something for everybody. So I encourage you to read 1 Corinthians 7. We're not going to this morning. 
But please read it. And if you have questions about what Paul is saying in this passage, call me. We can set up a time to talk about it. It's good stuff, but it is complicated. But in addition to Max being born, and it being 9-11, and me having as a scripture text, 1 Corinthians 7, I had my annual eye exam this week. Now this is more complicated than it sounds. Last year, I met with the optometrist. Quickly and confidently, I answered all his questions. This or this? Well, this. One or two? Two. And I just rocketed through all the questions that he asked me. Two weeks later, I got my new glasses. And the prescription was dead wrong. My old glasses were better than my new glasses. And I said, this will never do. Now, I could blame him at all, but he was very gracious and agreed to repeat the exam. The second time, I took my time and answered more thoughtfully and cautiously. <coughs> Again, we ordered the lenses, and this time when they arrived, they were spot on, and my vision was actually enhanced. The problem was not with him. The problem was with me. With how I looked at things. What I thought I saw without taking my time and being careful. So here we are. 9-11. Max coming into the world. Relationship status. It's complicated. Or is it? Where do all these vector lines cross? Resolution. It's an optical term. It has to do with the ability to see between two lines. And the better the resolution, the better you are able to distinguish between lines. So this morning, I want to administer to you an optical exam and see how well you're able to distinguish between the lines, to see how your spiritual vision is this morning. Partly because my voice is shot, but that wasn't the driving factor here. So here we go, optical quiz for the morning. Do we want to live in a world with this? This is Talladega Nights, just in case you're wondering. Okay. It is called a McMansion. Do you want to live in a world with this or with this? Click, 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 click. This or this? Okay, back up, back up, back up. You're getting ahead of me here. You're doing great, but you're getting ahead of me. Oh, um, De Deborah's pointing over at Royce. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. With this, and the way that, no, go to the next one. I, I typed in on um, Google Images, opulent buffet. That was, it's interesting what words you choose, what you can come up with. Okay, opulent buffet. This or this? Or this? This, next slide. Or this? Or this? That's a very profound sign, isn't it? Because too many times we're blind to the senior citizens in our world. We need to watch for it. This? Or this? And that's Christina's mom. This is Jonathan taking a picture of Laura 
Christina's mom taking a picture of Phil and the baby. This or this, you take time to read it. Your gifts are not about you. Leadership is not about you. Your purpose is not about you. A life of significance is about serving those who need your gifts, your leadership, your purpose. Or this. I love that. I would love to make a poster or a bag with that on it. This. Or this. How's your vision this morning? Was this a tough eye test? Or a tough heart test for you today? Is it really complicated? Or at the core of what matters in life, is it really pretty simple? I frame it a slightly different way. What kind of world do you want to live in? What kind of world do you want to leave to your kids and your grandkids? This or this? Here's my choice. Father, today Nancy and I and Jeff are celebrating Max coming into the world. We also celebrate 9-11. This coming week we'll also celebrate Nancy's birthday. And Christians will be beheaded in Syria. What kind of world do we want to leave to our children? our grandchildren. And what role do you want us to play, Father, in making it that kind of world? We can't do everything and we can't fix everything, but we can do something. Show us, Father, what it is you want us to do. Whether it's caring for an elderly person who is lonely, whether it's providing food for the hungry or housing for the poor, whether it's baptizing someone into Christ to begin a lifetime of discipleship and maturity into the image of Christ. Father, help us to see that we are your hands and your feet for the world. Help us to love with your love. Help us to serve the way your son served. Father, help us each one to make a difference. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Going down to Houston and New York to L.A. Where well, there's pride in every American heart and it's time we stand and say that I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the man who died who gave that right to me and I gladly stand up next to you, next to you and defender still today because there ain't, ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free 
And I won't forget the man who died Who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up Next to you, next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't, ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA God bless the USA